chain an ace or a king, so y you can no. trap with it. <laughs> the problem is you just don't flop anything very often when you do, so you really gotta make tough decisions out of position going forward. Yeah, yeah, but I, don't I don't think so. I don't think I did. No, you didn't use one. I went off. Yeah. It never, no, it definitely did not go off. You don't, I don't Look, it's okay. A little conversation here as to whether or not a time extension chip was used for the maybe action yeah, clock yeah. by Protection Poker, yeah. and yeah. dealer yeah. thought that maybe the clock expired. Looks like the consensus amongst the players as well as a TD is saying, no, that's not the case, so they give the t uh, time extension chip back to them. Yeah, the time extension chips are a really interesting part of the game. Uh, the action clock comes into play one table away from the money, so to prevent stalling on the way into the money. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for the rest of the tournament they're used. It's just a little more pressure on the players and uh, Well, it's so much more enjoyable from a viewing perspective, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, it really just helps move, thing, move things along. And, and it levels the playing field, too, you know, because no, no one's sitting here going, well, my strategy is going to be the sandbag and to frustrate the other players right. at this table. And, um, yeah, just from a viewing perspective, it's really gotten a positive response so and robert gonna get the walk here and he's gonna flip up his uh his pocket jacks okay. like cool guys uh he opened it under the gun he, he won that pot oh he did okay yeah. okay um yeah there's an, another dynamic is uh there's there's just a lot of pressure when you get to, uh when you see that clock in front of you there's a ding at 10 seconds and then this loud buzzer at zero and the ding uh, of the bell really <laughs> alerts people that they need to make a decision. <laughs> and you know what's interesting is that the, uh, you know, it, it kind of just seems like it fades into the background until it gets down to maybe a couple of players left and those time extension chips start to fade a little bit. And then all of a sudden that pressure really starts to get turned up. And uh, it's, it's been interesting to call a couple of these final tables where the time extension chips <laughs> have waned and you see how that really affects the game. Absolutely. Like you said, it really affects the strategy. <coughs> Eric on the button here, Jack Six says no thanks. Shankar with 8-7 offsuit in the small blind. 670,000 behind, gonna make the call. And Robert, ah oh yes, the old seven deuce. Decides not to bluff with the seven deuce. He's just going to see a flop. Both players hitting the seven on that flop. Shankar with the better of it right now, but may run out where the kickers don't matter. Shankar is going to bet just 25,000, so a min bet from him. Robert makes the, makes the call. Queen rolls off. So kickers are no longer in question. Most likely going to be a, ch a chop pot here if this is seen through. But Yeah, unless Robert decides to turn his hand into a bluff, which is possible. Uh, but your opponent's just going to hit that board so often too. So he's just going to try to show it down as cheaply as possible. Most likely going for the rest of his hand, it's just going to be check, check. And there goes the big pot of 125,000. Going to be split up between the two of them. <laughs> Robert trying to get the. Uh, German fans to uh, make some noise. <laughs> not for seven deuce, man. <laughs> may, have, may have flown across the world with you, but not for that one. Play poker online with Club WPT <laughs> for a chance to win a share of $100,000 in monthly cash and prizes, including VIP packages to live WPT main events. It's free to join Club WPT for new members. Use bonus code THUNDERSTREAM to sign up for Club WPT today and receive a free entry into the WPT Choctaw Main Event Qualifier on Sunday, March 15th. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 plus. Void where prohibited. Taking a look at our scoreboard here, Kevin up top, 3.3 million, and Jake is the shortest of the stacks now, 660,000. So Kevin with over 33% of the chips in play. 
So a couple guys getting down to that danger zone of 25-ish big blinds. They still have a little more than that, so they can they have some wiggle room. Nobody's just jamming it in yet. Over to Tony. He's also one of the shorter stacks. Ace four in the hijack. Says pass. Eric, ace six, also out of there. And Shankar with the same hand. Also ace six on the button is going to raise it on up to 55,000. And looks like another showdown between these two gentlemen. Robert with a queen jack in his hand in the small blind. And this one plays well both as a three bet and as a call. I'm not sure what, which line he's going to take. The downside of the three bet is it puts Shankar to test to just shove or fold. Kevin behind the big stack is going to get out of the way with his nine deuce. 160 in the center. Since Robert doesn't want to get blown off the hand, he wants to get to play as queen jack. He's just going to call. And the queen hits. So right out of the gate. Good news for Robert, who will quickly check. Shankar has a uh, showdown value with ace high. He could check that back, but he does have the backdoor flush draw on straight draws, so he could also decide to bluff with it. And there goes both of those. I think if he was a bit deeper, he might decide to go for a multi-street bluff with that hand, but uh, since that would put a lot of pressure on his own stack, he's going to try to get the showdown cheaply, maybe trap with ace high. And that's two pair for Robert. Can't lose this hand, 45,000. It's not an automatic fold from Shankar because ace high is still good a decent amount of the time, but with the stack sizes involved. Yeah, Robert going to pick up a little more than 200,000 new chips. Well, 105,000 new chips, but total pot size over 200,000. He, uh, he's been stacking some, uh, some chips recently, man. Things are starting to go his way a bit. Yeah. Shankar having a hard time catching a break here. Just tuning in, thanks for being with us. My name's Dave Fair alongside Tyler Patterson. We're at Thunder Valley in Sacramento, California, or at least just outside of Sacramento. And uh, this has been a, a great event so far. Tyler, you had a nice run on this one. You, uh, you finished 10th, and um, I'm glad you did because then we get to hang out and call this. <laughs> I know you're <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was close. Uh, Tony actually busted me in 10th place. We had, a, we had a shot. We weren't too deep on the last day. We started kind of deep, but uh, we lost some pots pretty early, and so we were just kind of holding on as a short stack. Do you hold a grudge? Do you like quietly root <laughs> against Tony because no, he busted no, you now? No, okay. absolutely not. No, <laughs> because I would. You, you are a better person than me. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> if I did that, I'd have a grudge against every one of these every guys of these at some <laughs> point. You know what I mean? Uh, so sixth place is going to earn forty-five thousand. Fifth is going to go uh, with almost sixty-two k, just a little south of that, and then eighty-five thousand for fourth, one hundred twenty-two for third, one hundred seventy-seven k for second, and. Up top, two hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars, which includes fifteen thousand uh, for that WPT Tournament of Champions bet. seat. Always a great event that they host in Las Vegas. Also, the honor of having the uh, the name engraved on the WPT Champions Cup here in season number eighteen. A lot of names on that cup, and some of the uh, the best names in poker are included in that certainly. Eric a couple times already, I think, and uh, Tony Tran is already on that cup. So Eric, who you're looking at right now there in the uh, in the blue jacket, he has the ability to make history. And there's been a lot of close calls. No one's done it yet, but he has the ability here to realistically potentially uh, win this tournament back-to-back -to -back in consecutive years, <laughs> and that's never happened for on the WPT Tour. And you think about, you know, being 18 seasons in and all the events that have happened uh, around the world, that's – Pretty unbelievable that it's never happened, and it would be even more unbelievable to, to be the first to do it. So, Eric, with that option today, if things go his way, 2.4 million behind, under the gun here, 8-7, he'll pass. And not just back-to-back -back from this tournament, but also WPT Player of the Year last year, and then to carry that into the next year and make another final table right away with a good chance to win, it's just it's pretty extreme. You can go a lot of these tournaments without... Uh, <laughs> Without some success. A lot of these guys have seen it. Nice to have a hot hand, huh? Yeah. yeah. Kevin going to raise with his 10-7 on the button. 
Tony in the big blind here, 725 back. There's 120 in the center right now. He's got Jack eight. I'll make the call, 150,000 in the middle. Here we go to a flop. A 10, a nine, and a three roll off. So Kevin, top pair, but open ender for Tony. So this flop really hits both of them in different ways. Could be fireworks here. Uh, if Kevin decides to see bet, um, Tony has kind of an awkward stack size for it, but deciding if he's going to just call or if he's going to check raise and go with his hand. Can I call, can we check the turn? <laughs> Said I call, can we check the turn? Kevin does not respond. Tony's been uh, been the speech play guy today. All right, let's see if the uh, the chicken wing makes an appearance here. Tony with the telegraph check. Kevin still best with top pair. So with that uh, that confident talking, he has balanced it well because the first time uh, he had three sixes and now he's doing it with just an open ender. So talking in the middle of hand for Tony doesn't necessarily mean he has the nuts or doesn't have anything. Check, check, and off rolls a queen. So Tony's strategy works. Now does he try to catch a bluff and check raise all in, or does he just bet for value and hope to get called by a nine tenor queen? He's reaching pretty deep. Bet two and a quarter. Tony's got less behind than are in the middle right now. That's a pretty big bet to be a bluff when you only have that many chips. Kevin giving us some real thought here. Yeah, he made a tough lay down with those nines earlier. Man, makes oh, he makes the a call. call. And Tony, big pot going his way now north of a million chips. So nice scoop for Tony. And just good overall play. I mean, figured out how to extract those chips. And it felt like that table talk did have something to do with it. Yeah, it might have. Um, so you hear just now, um, Kevin asked Tony if I bet the turn were you going to shove. I don't think Tony had that had his mind made up for that. Yeah, I believe you. It definitely took a while, but can it be louder? Could you could you just tell us like last ten seconds? Can I throw you a time down? Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be fine. Yeah. So when the time when the action clock runs out, they do owe a time bank. They don't have to actually give it in the middle of the hand. Because I know I took a while. So they're. Yeah, you can still go through many. the old school, just sit there and tank and think about it, and the dealer's not going to bug you. But at the end, no matter how many time extensions you've used, that's right. what you owe. And if in the off chance we get down you know, further in this final table and they're out of time banks, it does kill your hand. Yeah, as soon as you're out the, of the yeah, time extensions, exactly. for sure. So, so Shankar here, ace-10 of club, is going to raise it up under the gun. Over to Kevin, who just took a loss on that last hand in the cutoff, got a couple of fives. He's going to make the call. And it rolls back around to Shankar. Oh, excuse me. Eric's still in it. I thought he pushed his uh, cards into the center there. He's going to make the call with his 7 3 of hearts from the big blind. And boy, how about that? So. Kevin, he's got three fives. That's a pretty good flop for him. 
Very There's nice. a, uh, a gut shot there for uh, for Eric. And a backdoor and flush. And a backdoor draw. flush, yeah. So some possibilities there. He'll check. Not likely Eric pulls with the flop. And Shankar, who starts his hand with ace 10, just total whiff on that one. Yeah, another whiff. Kind of frustrating when you start to get short like Shankar is, too, to totally whiff like that in a three way pot. Two oh five in the center, and the bet is just sixty thousand from Kevin. And Setting the table, just come along for the ride. Being in position on that board, he is going to bluff it some of the time. So uh, I would expect yeah. Eric to at least continue and maybe even raise. But Eric just wow. folds. Yeah, so he's out of there. Kevin, with his set of fives, not going to do it for him though. Maybe Eric picked up some kind of strength from. Uh, from Kevin there. I would think that that gut shot and backdoor flush shot would, would at least warrant a call from there. <coughs> he also does have to consider that uh, Shankar might be check raising all in from the blind, so he might not get to get to see that card if he calls, so maybe that played a role. Seven Days to Vegas was screened at the 22nd Annual California Independent Film Festival where it won their best Comedy Award. The film premiered to rave reviews from film critic Richard Roper and others now available for purchase on iTunes and Amazon. That stars uh, Vince Van Patten, Patten WPT yeah. Zone, and it's pretty funny. I don't know if you got a chance to see it yet, it Dave. It is. But it's good, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of surprisingly. Really so, yeah, you see you see a movie like that, and not surprisingly uh, indicative of the people that were involved in it, but, like, you see some people that will just – They'll create a movie because they're in that space and they know that it's going to be, you know, widespread enough within their bubble. But this is actually just independently a very well done movie. I agree. And it's, it's, got, it's got like the, the whole caper heist feel yeah. to it. And uh, it's really it's really fun. So seven days, seven days to Vegas. Check that out. You should get the opportunity. The poker fan, which I assume you are if you're watching this. I think you'll, uh, you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Vince and his brother are both really good in it. An ace, a king, and a nine roll off. Shankar with his queen high, the best of it. Does have two clubs in his hand, one on the board. Jake with the missing queen for Broadway. Fires out 40,000, and that'll be enough to take down the pot. And queen high is good enough in that situation with also with the backdoor flush draw that uh, if Shankar and Jake were both deeper, he might uh, might defend it there. He might call. But their stack sizes, it's just too much pressure on your stack Maybe it's at this point, so you have to give it up. WPT Rolling Thunder main event final table. Final six players, $279,000 up top. Dave Farah and Tyler Patterson. With you live here in Sacramento. Beautiful day in Sacramento. Average stack size, you see 67 big blinds. That's where it's been kind of hanging out. These guys very deep. And only a couple players have really been at risk so far. But we are starting to see the uh, the stack sizes separate. We'll see if that continues. But Kevin here, 3.1 million under the gun. He is going to let it go. Jake quickly out of there as well. Over to Tony in the cutoff. 8-6 of clubs. So we're down to six here, but uh, one of the unique things about this tournament is that at six, ha uh, 36 players, we went down to six-handed instead of, uh, and actually starting on day two, we went down to eight-handed. So uh, you get to play a little shorter, which is nicer because you get to play with more hands, mm -hmm. a little more leg room. I think players really like the, the short-handed aspect of this tournament. You mean literal leg room? <laughs> I do mean literal leg room, <laughs> playing six-handed around the table. Uh, and Shankar going all in here for 507. Jack, 10 of clubs, and Eric asking for a count, so he raised it up to 55. Shankar comes over the top, and Eric, king, nine of diamonds with the decision to make. 612,500 in the center. It was a brave play by Shankar. It's, it, is, it is a standard play, but it's just not that fun to be all in for your tournament life with Jack High. So give him credit for being brave enough to do it. Eric's thinking about calling here. King nine suited will have enough equity against lots of the hands that Shankar shoves, but it's a decent percentage of the stack to have to put in. Yeah, and he'll, uh, he'll pass on that opportunity. So Shankar, maybe a little bit of frustration with just how card dead he's been. Uh, or like you said, maybe just assessing the situation, going this is the right play to make. Comes over the top, jams, and it works. 
Yeah, he's more of a logical player than uh, just to be frustrated, I think. Still the shortest of the stacks, 615,000, 25 big blinds. As you said, kind of that 25 big blind mark is where you start thinking about <laughs> making moves like that. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned it being beautiful out here. We got the Whitney Oaks Golf Course as part of uh, the Thunder Valley Casino. So if you guys come out here for anything we do out here, we can play golf out there. Oh, we that's have, nice. Uh, How far away is it? Uh, it's real close, like 10 minutes, and I'll shuttle you back and forth. Um, but coming up, we have the WPT Deep Stacks here in April. Um, the week leading up to it, there's the uh, – Thunder Valley Thunder Buddies tournament with the bounty on a bunch Thunder of us. Buddies. <laughs> yeah, we, that's that's the official name of the tournament. I love we, uh, it, man. It's the Thunder Buddies. A <laughs> <laughs> um, little, uh, little cheeky, but I dig it. So, <laughs> and yeah. again, you know, just uh, if you haven't been here before, it's my first time on property, and very impressed. Uh, the rooms are fantastic in the, uh, the casino. They're uh, you know spacious, very modern. I like how you know they have just USB ports everywhere <laughs> and. Yeah, e easy to uh, to access. The in-room dining is fantastic. The uh, fitness facility here, the steakhouse went there last night. That oh was yeah. that was tremendous. So, yeah, lots of great stuff on site. And I had no idea about the golf course. So, that's so even better. the golf course is great. It's really really tough, really nice. Uh, just to finish that Thunder Buddy thought, we do have a we have a golf outing, an official golf outing as part of that. So if you come out, you can play that tournament. You can uh, come out with us. We're going to do a scramble tournament. And we'll figure all skill levels are are. Uh, <laughs> Invited, we can put you together with the the right players. How's your golf game? Uh, uh, I'm a six-ish handicap. Oh, right really? Now, so <laughs> okay. I don't play that much right now. I'm where I haven't been, but uh, yeah, I can get a little bit lower than that, a little bit higher most of the time. <laughs> okay, that's pretty solid, man. Yeah. Now that you're uh, in Vegas as well, there's uh, plenty of great courses out that direction too. So yeah, absolutely. The WPT Deep Stacks Championship is, uh, the, you know, their whole season of the WPT Deep Stacks. All the winners get to come play that, but it's $2,500 buy-in. And that's uh, April, I think, 3rd to 7th, right after that, uh, right after that Thunder Buddies uh, Bounty Tournament. And we go out to Top Golf. That's another thing. Thunder Valley has is sponsored sponsors Top Golf. There's a Thunder Valley Bar at Top Golf. Nice. Um, so we can go out there and Did have some fun. See that video of Mike Trout at Top Golf? <laughs> Unbelievable! Just yeah. ripped it. Yeah, it looks looks Unreal. like Matt Savage hitting a golf ball. That's right. Mike Trout and Matt Savage hit it about the same distance, I think. I was actually with uh, Matt Savage one day at Top Golf. We were filming a piece, and um, yeah, he was out there ripping it, man. <laughs> hitting the ba the uh, the back netting and dropping in each one of them he's got a pretty good golf game place is great we were we were gambling on uh who could get the higher ball speed off the club i mean it has all the all the Important bells and whistles out along. there right. oh yes, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they find new ways for you to uh, to bet your friend it's kind of fun <laughs> yeah so eric here in the hijack he's got ace five of spades and he went up to fifty five thousand over to jake here short stack at six hundred and fifteen thousand he's got queen five and he'll, uh, he'll make the call. So 150,000 in the center. Heads up to the flop. And we got a king, a 10, and an ace, all clubs. So what about that? <laughs> so nut flush for Jake in the window. With a royal draw, which doesn't yeah. matter for the strategy of this hand, but we've already seen a straight flush. We might as well see a royal Might as well flush. see the royal, yeah. And Eric does hit his ace. So let's see what happens here. 35,000 is the bet. Jake tries to call and keep Eric bluffing or put more money in and hope Eric has something he can't fold. He's going to try to keep him bluffing, it looks like. 220,000 is the pot size right now. And a five rolls off, so of that's good for him. It improves Eric's hand and does it give him a possibility of actually making the best hand if he fills up here. But... As you see, pretty unlikely. Jake at 93% going to go ahead and check over to Eric. Eric is definitely considering betting for value, which I think would be normal. He's not going to love it when Jake shoves. Jake might just call and hope that uh, Eric keeps bluffing, but there's also some two pair and three of a kinds and straights and all sorts of things that Eric could not fold if he puts it in. So. 
just raising all in might be the the preferred line here. If he does, it is possible Eric could find a fold. Three twenty in the center, five fifty behind. Jake gonna use one of his time extension chips. Gives another thirty seconds to think this one through. It's always interesting when players use the time in extension chips when it's not just facing a river bet, when it's just call or fold, when they actually have a bunch of a range of options. So Jake with the call there because of course, but what does that tell Eric? And a two of hearts rolls off. And that is actually quite a good card for Jake, I would imagine, because if Eric has put Jake on chasing a flush, a couple of hearts roll off there at the end, and Eric's got a strong hand. He's got you know two pair, including a pair of aces. A very strong hand, and it is up against uh, a, the big blind, which means there's other two pairs and single paired hands that might have a tough time folding. So he might go for value, but it is it's kind of a scary coordinated board where he could check back just to uh, out of caution. Not the case. 175,000. Almost 600,000 in the center right now. Jake with 450 back. And they're all going in here, right? Oh, yeah. They're all going in, but it, it is possible that Eric finds a fold. It's not, it, it's not an easy fold, but there's nothing worse than ace five that Jake would check raise all in value. He might do it as a bluff with a hand like Queen 10 that has the Queen of Clubs or qu or King Jack or Jack 10 with the Jack of Clubs or Queen of Clubs um, with just one club. Um, so there is there are some bluffs that Jake would do this with, but for his whole tournament life, probably not that likely. But there's almost nothing that is worse than Eric's hand that Jake would be doing it for value with. Like he's not going to do this with Ace Deuce or King-10, or King-Deuce. I think he would just check call those hands. So really, even though he has two pair, he really just has a bluff catcher at this point. And Eric reaching for chips. Looks like it's uh, 275 to call. Over and a million in the center. Right, so a little more than three to one he's getting. So he only has and to be right. And he finds the fold. Great fold. And Jake with almost a double up there, so going all the way up to a million chips was at about 600,000 and then comes up no longer in sixth place, now up in fifth, 42 big blinds, a little bit of breathing room for Jake Schwartz. Yeah, big pot for Jake there, that's that's a big swing. That's going to be frustrating for Eric for a while, but he'll he'll and get the news on the break. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> find out that was the the right fold. The only thing he'll kick him for is that he didn't check back on that river. But here you go, under the gun, <laughs> Eric, with new life, new cards, Ace King. I see uh, WPT <laughs> champion Adam Weinrob joined our Facebook chat. I don't know if he joined before or after we talked about Seven Days to Vegas, but just so you know, buddy, we already talked about it. Okay, we we plugged it for you. <laughs> It's a good movie. <laughs> we all concur, and people should see it for sure. Over to Tony, the big line now, ace three. Steam raiser. <laughs> <laughs> Calls him out for the steam raise. Little does he know. Tony with the call, 55,000. There's a king, a queen, and a four that roll off. So Eric spiking that one hard. Top pair, top kicker. Tony checks. Nothing for Tony here except he does have the backdoor not flush draw. Check, check, and a three rolls off. So Tony improves his hand there. Best card in the deck for Tony. 
Catches a pair of threes, and now he has an up flush draw. He's going to check it. I don't think Eric's going to let another card roll off. He's going to fire a bet here. Tony is certainly not folding. He's just deciding whether to bluff or call. Just goes with the call. And in the seven, Tony checks. Eric's thinking about how much value to go for, and then we get to see if Tony decides to go for it with a bluff, or make a hero call, or just lay it down. Eric bets 210,000, and <laughs> this is a great spot for for Tony if he really thinks Eric might be steaming and not have it. He really could shove here. He has the ace of clubs. Yeah, this has developed into quite the hand with just that little table talk that started <laughs> all of this and kind of putting him on a, on a steam raise, and it's working out pretty well for Eric here. So 210,000 is the bet, and Tony reaching to his stack. Goodness. I mean, I hate a call from Tony, but uh, I don't really hate a raise. Just fires out two time extension chips at once. He knows he's going to need a little time here. Mm -hmm. At this point, Eric's got to be feeling pretty good about his hand. <laughs> wow. Makes the call. Goes for the hero call and does not work. Pot of 720,000. So Eric, <coughs> after losing a handful of chips, going to have them all swing right back his direction. <laughs> yeah. So a quick up and quick down and quick back up. And check raising all in there with the ace of clubs blocker. Uh, it probably wouldn't have worked. I think Eric probably would have just called it off anyway. But it could work. Yeah. And he doesn't have to have ace king. That's, the abs that's near the very top of what Eric's going to have. And he saw a bit of frustration on the face of Tony there, realizing that maybe he uh, was too quick to put Eric on the uh, the steam raise. The steam raise, yep. right. That seemed like that dominated uh, Tony's decision there. I don't mind pausing. They're discussing a uh, yeah. break here. I would have yeah, obviously. Under the gun, Shankar, a couple of fives. He is the uh, the shortest of stacks at 615,000. Ah, interesting. Robert in the hijack with Ace King. Ace King keeps popping up. With Shankar's stack size, uh, there's not going to be a lot of squeezers, meaning people uh, three betting behind. So I don't think Robert's going to slow play. I think he's just going to raise himself here. Yeah, he'll go up to 140. Three bet will push Kevin out of there. Jake also gone. Tony in the small blind going to say pass. Eric in the big blind, five deuce, also out of there. Over to Shankar, let's see. Pretty interesting decision for Shankar. He can shove, but if he does, it's only if he thinks Robert is getting out of line ever. And we haven't seen bet, that much Which so doesn't far. seem very likely with their stack size either. Yeah, I mean, even if he does have the best of it, which he does, you see the percentages here. I mean, if he's not dominated, he's only at 54% with his fives. Trying to decide if Robert so has pass on the coin flip for my tournament life. And Robert's going to win the pot, 120000 Robert probably doesn't have very many three-bet folds there to those stacked up. So with no fold equity, he just decides not to take it, not to go for it and go with it with the fives. So Robert now second in chips, 2.4 million. 
97 big blinds. When I do what? Plenty of room to maneuver. Oh, that's a nice, easy pop for him. Easy decision. It's been, it's been a real bloodbath at this final table so far. When, I, what, what, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm in, in or what? When I'm in a pot? Just right now? Like 10 of our I got it. Right. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, Frank. Sounds like Tony's getting advice from Frank from the rail. <laughs> Frank the tank with the chicken wings. Well, he's already got the chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kevin in the hijack here. Jack six. A couple of diamonds. Still with a healthy stack of 3.1 million for Kevin. Jake here in the cutoff. Queen Jack offsuit. No pass. Tony on the button. Ace four, couple of clubs. And 30 big blinds and uh, having just lost the pot, he's considering three betting, considering just shoving. Also calling with his hand is just fine. Looks like he wants to put it all in. Almost like a steam raise. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just the feeling I get. It looks like he wants to just put it in. He goes to the three bet. Yeah, so he'll three bet it up to 200,000. So 200,000 is the bet, and he was questioning whether or not that took a little longer than 30 seconds. Table concurs that it's just fine, and Kevin's going to jump out of there, and Tony's three bet will work, so 320,000. Coming back his direction. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the chicken here, but you know, no matter how much you try to break it down, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> we will never know. But that's uh, that's my job here. I'm supposed to be calling the strategy for you. So well, if well, I, yeah, if I can't do it. I don't who's, know who's if there is it? any. We haven't seen this strategy <laughs> <laughs> be explained to us in full. You know, it's it's right. hard to figure out which hand to put the chicken wing in. If you're supposed to put them both in one hand, if they're supposed to be left of the card, the right of the card. I mean, this stuff. It's is a lot, man. It's a lot. It's important stuff. Kevin raises under the gun. Yeah, king ten. Couple of spades. Jake behind in the hijack. Queen ten of diamonds. Eric with king queen. Offsuit on the button. Playing with a pinochle deck. Yeah, it looks like Shankar is getting up. This is going to be the last hand of this level. Robert in the big blind here says, oh, why not with my 8-6. Since everybody else has each other's cards, I think that 8-6. Pretty live, see, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see it in the percentages. Look, he has 29% to win the pot, yeah. even though he has an 8 oh and boy. 6. Well, open-ender, queen hit, so Jake and Eric get a pretty nice piece of that. But, yeah, Robert's still very much alive here. Check from Robert, check from Kevin. Kevin Jake with top pair here. Is going to check. Okay. Eric also checks. Wow. And a six rolls off, which is not great news for uh, for Robert. Does get the six, but didn't need that if he was hoping to complete his open ender. Eric checking the button in a four-way pot with the king-queen there. It's really cagey. It's also maybe just really cautious because it's four ways. And Robert here going to splash out 130,000. He has a pair and an open ender, just hoping that no one was really interested. Turns out two guys were very interested. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Both with top pair. Eric with the best of it. Let's see what Jake does. Going to make the call. All of a sudden, this is a pretty significant pot to end <coughs> this level. Over a half million already in the center. Jake, who's got the worst of it, only has 845,000 behind. And Eric has been playing very coy here. It's an interesting spot for Eric. I think he almost always continues, but, uh, well, he's <laughs> counting out a raise here. Wow. 
It is my year. Biggest pot of the entire final table so far. 365,000 goes into the center. Wow. 885,000 in the center outside of the uh, the all-ins that we've seen. This one's cranking up pretty good. So now Robert in an interesting position. Yeah, after checking back with from Eric, uh, there's not a ton of credibility here except for a hand like 3-4 or 8-9. But since Robert has an 8, 8-9 eight, is not as likely. So he jumps out of there, and so does Jake, and almost a million chips get pushed the way of Eric right now. Pretty nice power move from him to end this level. Yeah, just getting that hand over with is actually really nice for Eric because a, a lot of bad things could have happened on, on the river card, and he has enough chips to do it. So we'll take a short break, but as you see, Kevin up top with 101 big blinds, over 3 million in chips, and Shankar south of 500,000. Thanks for being with us. It's the Season 18 WPT Rolling Thunder final table. We'll be back in just a few minutes. You ever had a pair of thank you socks before? Not I. The thank you socks. Solid. Yeah. Feel good, too. Changes the attitude a little bit, you know? I have, to, I have to wash my own socks. <laughs> 